What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? This is going to be your Empire Review. Um... Alright, so I'm going to have to... I, I, I don't know if I can do this in order. I'm just going to have to go through what how it went down. Because, it, it, again, the episode is just all over the place. Like It's like they're bringing in a lot of elements that they're not bringing together. I don't know, y'all. <clears throat> but I'm just going to go down the list. I'll leave the most important stuff that I think towards the end. But let's just go down the list. So, we got Tiana and Hakeem. Tiana and Hakeem... Hakeem is hanging out with the kids, with Tiana, and, and he's like, you know, I took down. She said, you know, you putting up diss tracks about Blake. He's like, look, I took the tra I took it down. Don't I get credit for taking it down? She's like, hell no, nah, because you shouldn't have put it up there to begin with. So he's, you could tell he's really trying. She said, but I can acknowledge that, you know, you're doing better, and I can see you're taking care of yourself. You know, she want to go on and take him back, but she she really has to make a stand, which I can respect that. I can respect that she can't make it easy for him, but they're going to get back together. Hell, they're going to get back together. But then she says, and you can take the kids for a couple of days. Like, she's doing him a favor, right? Which, I, I'm not saying that's not a, a good thing. But, first of all, how'd she just get custody of Bella? Bella ain't her baby. And I understand that Hakeem was in a bad place and he was going through what the fuck he was going through. But now that he's back living at home with Cookie, Lucius, and everybody, how she just got Bella? And then how you just going to say you can take the kids? Like, you giving him permission for his own damn child. Now, the son, that's between the two of y'all, I can see. But Bella, that's not your... And they, as far as I know, they never got married. So, how you just got Bella? Anyway... Later on in the episode, Blake got a hold of the diss track, even though he put, you know, Hakeem took it down. Yeah, I know how the internet is. It don't take but a minute for somebody to capture it, repost it, whatever. And so the diss, you know, so Blake got a hold of the diss track, and then Blake released his own diss track, which was actually pretty damn good. He kind of got Hakeem really good. So, of course, Hakeem's first response was to respond. Him, him and Chicken and the, the crew sitting up, they stayed up all damn night trying to come up with a response. And then at a certain point, Hakeem, you know, they said, well, he don't have a girlfriend. We can't talk about his daddy. He don't really, you know, it's nothing. He don't have nothing that we can go after. So Chicken was like, well, talk about that. Talk about he don't have no life. And I think at that point, it hit Hakeem. So Hakeem went on his Instagram live and he said, you know, I know y'all are expecting me to hit back. Y'all y'all waiting for a diss record. Y'all waiting for me to come back. But I'm not going to do it. He said, you know... I'm just, I, I'm, you know, disc records make y'all, you know, entertain y'all. They make a little bit. They sell some records. But in a couple of months, y'all forget about it. And then what I'm left with is my family being drugged through the mud, his family being drugged through the mud, and I'm not going to do that. So at this point, as far as I'm concerned, it's dead. And, of course, his friends was like, what is wrong with you? How you going to just do that? And he was like, yo. It's just, you know, I'm just, I'm just not there anymore. Like, I'm trying to mature. I'm trying to do better. And, of course, they looking at him like, Hakeem crazy. But, see, that's what's going to get uh, old girl back. That's what's going to get her back is that you don't respond and you take the high road. Not to mention, you really should just take the high road. You know what I'm saying? At a certain point, you hit, he hit back. Yeah, he stole your record. Everybody knows he stole your record now. Move on. It ain't that deep. Um, Kai and um Jamal. Chilling at the apartment. They get a ding-dong at the door. They think it's the delivery man. Nope. It is Josh Stone, a.k.a. Winter. Now, I don't know where the hell Josh Stone been all these years. But I used to love me some Josh Stone. You hear me? And I'm sure she's probably come out with some projects that just didn't go mainstream that I'm not familiar with. But, honey, Josh Stone has a voice. I mean, a soulful voice. If y'all don't know nothing about Josh Stone, go Google it. Go download some songs. I'm telling y'all, that girl, honey. And Quincy Jones actually, for a while, I, I can't say he discovered her, but for a while he had he ta had taken her under his wing as like a protege or what have you. I'm not again. I'm not sure what what kind of went down. I do remember Dallas Austin said she was fucking for tracks, and I ain't heard nothing since. So I don't know what happened with that. But anyway, she shows up now. She is Winter, the artist that Jamal was bragging about at the, like on the first episode when he was talking about his record label when he was still living in London. So she was like, look, you just going to get me something. She's got this, you know, her London accent and everything. You just going to sign me to your label and then leave me high and dry over in London? Nah, I'm gonna, I came across the pond so we can finish this album. Where I'm going to sleep, <laughs> honey. So we see her um, at the, you know, uh, 
Jamal takes her over to the house so she can do some recording so that they can listen and everything. And, of course, Cookie was blown away. Because, like I said, the woman's voice is, oh, God, it is just a soulful voice. So, of course, Cookie is blown away. And she's like, look, we got to sign you to our management. What's up? Jamal was like, excuse, excuse me. Hello? I already got her. And he, you know... Cookie was like, boy, don't worry about it, you know, but she, we need her on our, like, we can make gold with this, like, so Cookie is putting on the hard press, I mean, she cooking and all kinds of stuff, and Kai told Jamal, he said, why do you let her do that, you know, like, I ain't trying to come for your mama, but Jamal, you sitting here complaining, because Jamal was complaining about, you know, she just doesn't respect me as a businessman, that's my artist, how could she do that to me, right in my face, and Kai was like, because you don't demand anything different. He said, you you know, have you talked to her? Did you, you know, she said, well, she just doesn't respect me. He said, well, have you told her that we engaged yet? No, I'm just writing for the right, waiting for the right time. She said, no, you're not waiting for the right time. You're waiting for the time when you think she's going to accept it. And, you know, Kyle kind of gave him some, some, um, sh some straight talk. So Jamal did sort of confront Cookie. And he said, look, that is my artist. And, like, I would appreciate you respecting that. And Cookie did what Cookie does. Like, oh, come on, boy. He said, see, that's what I'm talking about. We talk in business. I'm not a boy. Like, I am I am a grown man, and this is my artist, and I need you to respect that. And that's when he told her, he said, and I'm engaged. So, of course, Cookie was like, what? What? Um, I don't know if they made a whole lot of headway, but he did have a conversation. Like, Cookie going to be Cookie. I don't think that's going to change anything that she's going to do, to be honest with you. Because at the end of the day, she still doesn't. She she doesn't necessarily respect what he's doing in London because she don't want him in London. So she doesn't want him to be successful over in London because she wants him to stay in New York and help them build the family business. She's not interested in him building his business. Um, but okay. All right. Uh, then we see... Okay, let me go ahead and hit... Um, let me go ahead and hit Andre in his situation and then we'll get to the two big storylines. So Andre... It's still working with um, Quincy's mom to try to get Quincy out. Now, y'all know it is really hard, especially since Quincy took a plea deal, from my understanding. Once you plead guilty, it is very hard to get it overturned. It's very hard to come back later and say, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Like, oops, I'm sorry I, I said I was guilty. Because, of course, they're going to say, but you said you did it. They don't, you have to show, like, a videotape of somebody of the police beating your ass before. they Like, look what they did with the, with the, with the Central Park Five. Like, look how long it took them to overturn their situation and to, to make that whole situation right. And it was all kinds of evidence that the police were, you know, um, it was a misconduct. So it's hard for that to happen. And so the lawyer is, you know, telling the mom and the mom is getting frustrated. And Andre is like, look, we, we're going to make this happen. Like, this is going to happen. And you see them getting closer and <coughs> they decided that they were going to do like a social media blitz. Like they were going to try to get public opinion out there, get his story out there, but it wasn't going as fast as Andre wanted it to go. Um, and you saw him and the mom really working together. And you know, there's, there's been sexual tension between them from day one. So they end up going in, you know what I'm saying? They, they did it. it. It happened. You know, it was cool. It was whatever. And she, you know, she was cool with it. It wasn't no, you know, whatever. So next thing you know, we see, um, Andre down to the jail talking to his boy, you know, dude that he be getting, um, got him to do all his favors and stuff. He said, look, and the dude was like, why are you worried about Quincy? He was like, you are out, you doing your own thing. Why are you still worried about what's going on here at, you know, in the jail? Like, let that go. Like he going to be, you know, he said, the, he, he said he's having some bad days. He said, and it looked like the boy might be headed for a breakdown, but that's not your problem. Why are you worried about him? And Andre was like, because I can, like, I, I you know, because I can, like that. This is what I this is what I'm on. He said, but I need a, I need a favor from you. He said it's a big favor, but I'll make it worth your while. Now I don't know how the hell he's gonna make it worth his while, because remember, he ain't got no money. So I don't know what else you're gonna offer a man in jail. Well, they can't really do you know what I'm saying. So I don't know what Jamal did. I mean, I don't know what Andre offered him because of course they didn't show us that part. But next thing you know, Andre's with the mama, they working on posters and all this frequency shit. And the phone rings, and it's the lawyer. Well, come to find out, somebody in jail has confessed to the crime, and they knew details about the crime that hadn't been released to the public that only the person who committed the crime would have known, or somebody who saw the police report. 
Now, here's the thing. I'm going to let them have that for the purposes of this storyline. Because supposedly now Quincy's going to get out of jail. But that shit just don't happen that quick. Like, you still have to have... You confessing to the crime and knowing information, it still don't go that fast. But, all right, I'm going to let them have that. I'm just going to let them have that. Yay, Quincy getting out of jail. Woo, woo. So that's that storyline. All right. Where do I go next? Where do I go next? All right. So it's two major storylines. So I'm going to go ahead and go to, um, I'm, I'm going to deal with um, Kingsley. I'm going to go and go to Kingsley. So we, this was a big reveal episode. I will say that. We, we got some big stuff that, that came out in this episode. So at the beginning of the episode, we see Quincy with three, um, we see uh, Lucius and Cookie in the studio with uh, three black divas. And, you know, Kingsley is in there totally uninterested and unbothered and they're doing a song which you know it's a hit and everybody in the studio getting it you know everybody's like yes this is the next hit and kingsley was like look i don't know what the hell like you thought just because you went and got cookie and cookie and lucius that i was going to jump like i was going all of a sudden fall at your feet and be like oh yes this is great he was like i still don't want them on my label and i still don't want to fuck with them so it's whatever so they end up um going upstairs to talk about it and it's lucius cookie tisha campbell's character um i forget her name and um giselle and kingsley right so of course him and lucius are going back and forth and they having a pissing contest lucius ends up walking out and kingsley's like whatever like i you know i, I ain't losing nothing because i don't want them on this label and i really don't fuck with you so i ain't really losing nothing by you walking out so Giselle starts working with Ken's Kingsley, and Cookie starts working on Lucius. And basically, both of the women save the day, and the women convince the men, y'all just need to go on and work together. Giselle was like, so what if they make a little bit of money? Like, this is going to be a hit. We're going to make tons of money off of this. Like, so what? You know, we've... You know, with Empire has always split the cost with management. So let them do their little showcase. Because, you know, Lucius was talking about doing a showcase and doing all these great things. But he was like, I need the money. Like, and Kingsley was like, do what you got to do. He was like, that sounds like a you problem. Do what you got to do with your with your artists. And Giselle was like, but we've always split the cost. And Kingsley was like, that's the old Empire. I ain't splitting shit. So she's sweet talking him and like, look, man, you know, the money, you going to get your money back. You really, come on. Like, forget, like. Uh, forget it's Lucius and Cookie. Let's make some money. So on the flip side, Cookie's talking to Lucius like, look, we need this hit. Like, this could take us where we need to go. This is an established artist. We're not going to have to work as hard. But we know that's a hit. We know they're going to make us some money. You need to go back in there and make this work. So they go back in, and both of them basically are ready to make the deal. So Lucius was the first one to sort of just say, um, look, man... Blah, 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 blah. Let's make this work. And Kingsley was like, all right. Because he was ready to make the deal, right? So then we see Lucius go um, to Kingsley and invite him to dinner. Kingsley was like, you invite me to your house? He said, look, we can right work together. So we need to work together. Like, we need to go ahead and figure this out. And I need to get to know you. You need to get to know me. So, yes, I'm inviting you to come to my house and break bread. Kingsley was like, all right then. So then he pulls out this picture again of this woman. And he goes to visit her in the hospital. And he's, he's like, yeah, the devil didn't invite me into his lair. But he don't know. He think he's getting over on me, but I'm getting over on him. He don't really know what this is about. He don't know me like that. And, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it right. I'm going to make it right, Mom. So he found out the lady is his mother. I'm going to make him pay. I'm going to make it right. So he goes to dinner. And they're at dinner, and Lucius is doing what Lucius does. He's landed on thick, talking about um, what he created with his legacy with his kids. And Kingsley asked him, he said, yeah, you know, but what about the drugs? Like, I, I read all the, the stories, you know, you were just a common drug dealer, sling, you know, selling drugs, to, selling poison to your community. And Jamal was like, hold up, player. Lucius like, no, he's right. He's right. I did. He said, but what you'll never understand is what I was dealing with. He said, you'll never know the struggle that I knew. He said, I had to I had to feed my family, and I'm never going to apologize for doing what I had to do to take care of my family. I said, oh. He said, now let me show you what I'm talking about. So he takes them into the studio, and he shows them, he shows Kingsley the talent that, you know, he said, this is what I was sacrificing for. And, of course, he's playing the guitar, Jamal singing, 
uh, Hakeem hits a little hook. And then Andre, he was like, and Andre, he can solve any problem you put in front of him. I want one time for Andre to just hit a note and be and like sound like Lufa. So they could be like, damn. Because I feel like he, he could sing. He could sing. But he just be sitting in the cut like, I count the money. <laughs> so, Kingsley listening to it, but you can tell he just ain't buying it. Like, you can really tell that he just going through the motions like, this motherfucker think I'm listening to this shit. So, later on that night, we see him and um, Lucius and Cookie, and, and Kingsley agreed to everything. He agreed to the showcase. He agreed, like, basically, he gave them everything they had asked for to begin with. And um, Cookie was like, I didn't think it was going to work, but I see it work. Then, of course, we flip over to um, Kingsley back at the hospital with the woman, with his mom. And he's like, yeah, you should have seen him putting on a show. You should have seen him talking about his kids. And da 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 da, da. And it was at that moment, before he even finished his little speech, I said, that's Lucia's son. Come to find out, the picture, when you open the picture up, it's Lucia's holding hands with this white woman. And, I mean, I shouldn't have said white woman, but she's white. And, um, come to find out, Lucius and this woman, I guess, had some sort of relationship. And Kingsley is their son. And he was like, I'm not going to let him get away with what he did to us. He just erased us. I said, oh, shit. It's about to be some shiggity now. So, I don't know at what point Lucius messed with this woman. We don't know that whole timeline yet. But, that's what the deal is with Kingsley, and that's why he got such a battery in his back about um, Lucius and that whole situation because that's his father, and he feels like Lucius was not there for him. And I'm like, oh wow. Now the last little storyline, which again is a very important storyline, and it's important for a lot of reasons because it crosses over from um, TV to real life. So let me talk about what happened. And I knew it was funny because I knew this whole situation too before it was revealed. I ain't saying I'm that smart. I'm just saying the storylines aren't that complicated. So, we see uh, Candace, you know, Cookie and her two sisters, Vivica Fox's character. Now, remember they mentioned something about her having bruises or something last, about two episodes ago or whatever. So, I said, yeah, that's going to come back. Because, you know, when they mention something like that, you know it's going to come back later. So, in this episode... Cookie noticed there was some bruises on Candace's arm. That's Vivica Fox's character. And um, Cookie asked her about it. Cookie and the sister asked her about it. And she basically said, they were like, you know, is your husband beating you? We found out that her and her husband are separated. And, um, you know, she was like, is your husband beating you? And she was like, girl, no. And stay out of my business. You know, she totally flipped out. And Cookie was like, well... She asked us the, uh, the other sister. She said, you really think her husband's beating her? The sister was like, I don't think he got no heart like that. Like, I really don't think so. But they are separated. And, you know, you just can't put nothing past nobody. And then her reaction, like, leave me alone. Those, you know, you stay out my damn business, Cookie. Mind your damn business. So, we met her son for the first time. He's like an analytics guy, millennial. They were having problems with the, um, with the YouTube stream or whatever. And he was able to fix it. And I knew then. I said, it's him. I said, it's him. It's not the husband. He the one beating her ass. So, um, the husband actually shows up with the son there. Her and the son are there. The husband shows up. He was like, look, I need my black suit. You didn't lock me out the damn house. I need my key to get in. And she was like, you know, she told the son, give him your key. He was like, no, I don't want to. She said, go ahead, give your father the key. Let him do what he got to do. So, the husband takes the key and he rolls out or whatever. So the son turns to um, Candace and is like, he's in the house. I don't like it. We need to go. And, but it wasn't coming off angry. It was coming off scared. Like he was afraid. And Vivica Fox was afraid. Like her affect was afraid. So they were like, come on, we got to go. So Cookie was like, what the fuck just happened? And the other sister was like, they both scared of him. Like both of them are afraid. So the next day rolls around, can't nobody get in touch with Candace. They call and ain't nobody answering the phone. You know, she didn't show up for work. So Cookie was like, look, let's roll over there. Her and the sister, let's roll over there. They pull up, they hear a fight going on inside. They go in the house. It's the son whooping Vivica Fox's ass. Do you hear me? He is kicking her. He is punching her. Like, he is kicking her ass. So, of course, Cookie do what Cookie do. She run up on him. He pushes her down. Because, see, he's in that rage. 
He pushes her down. The other sister gets goes and gets a coat rack, and she's hitting him with the coat rack. He turns around and turns the coat rack on her. So then here come Cookie, because Vilica can't do shit. She's on the floor, fucked up. Here come Cookie. Cookie comes back and punches him in the face. Yo, he ain't even flinch, and he punched the shit out of Cookie. So, of course, now Cookie down for the count. So the two sisters start running. They actually end up running into a bathroom and locking themselves in the bathroom. Cookie calls 911. She's like, look, he's going to kill my sister. I need y'all to get here. Um, Because Cookie can't do She down too. He punched her so hard she could barely get up. Now he's at the bathroom door trying to knock down the bathroom door. He's got a lamp, a, a bottom, a base of a lamp. And he's putting a hole through the bathroom door. Like he almost, he gets through the door. Like you can see him. And by that time, the police are showing up. And Cookie is like, look, put the, she said, calm down. Because the police are on their way. I need you to calm down. She gets him to put the, the, the base down as the police are walking in there. And she tells the police he doesn't have a weapon. He doesn't have a weapon. He, you know, she's telling them. And they're, you know, they're like, put your hands up, put your hands up. So he puts his hands up. But then he hears his mother call his name or something. So he turns to his mother and they fucking shoot. Thank God it was a taser and not a gun. And so, of course, now Cookie is like, oh, my God. Like, I told y'all he didn't have a weapon. What is wrong with y'all? So, they arrest him. Vivica Fox comes out the bathroom, and she's like, look, he has mental problems. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. She's like, he's just a baby. He's just a baby. Leave him alone. And he's 19, so they about to take his ass to jail. Because it's clear that he's whooping their ass. Like, it's no ifs, ands, or buts about what the situation is. He said, ma'am, I'll be sure to let the proper authorities know, and you are more than welcome to come down here, but he going with us. So, she turns, so they take him out of there, whatever, and she turns to Cookie, and she says, you called the police on my son? How could you do that? She said he could. they could have killed him. You called the police on my son. She said, you know what, Cookie? You are dead to me. You are no longer my sister. I don't ever want to talk to you again. And she runs out to go down to the police station. And Cookie, and of course, immediately Cookie's crying and she's upset. And she's like, what was I supposed to do? He was going to kill her. You know, that was truly a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. So then we see Cookie go back to the house and she sees her face. She's fucked up. And she does a lie. She said, you know what, I'm not going to be able to hide this. So I might as well go ahead and, and say what I want to say. And she said, um, because the whole episode they were talking about how Cookie's got all these viewers and all these influencers. And she got people wanting her to do ads and stuff like that. Y'all know how that, that, that YouTube, Instagram stuff works. And um, she said... Somebody I really care about hurt me tonight. She said, no, it wasn't Lucia's and it wasn't none of my sons before that. Don't, you know, don't get that party started. She said, but somebody I really loved. She said, and I had to make a decision that scared the hell out of me. I had to call the police. She said, but it scared me because he could have died. They could have killed him tonight. And she said something that was so deep. She said, who do we call to protect us? She said, that's what black and brown people deal with. When we call the police, we have to think about that part of calling the police. She said, who do we call? If we're scared to call the police, who's here to help us? I said, you know what? That is deep. That is so deep and so true. And that is just such a reality that people who are not a minority don't understand. Because here's the thing. They lived in an affluent neighborhood, and they those police were responding to a call in an affluent neighborhood, in an affluent house. Had that been the hood, would they have tasers or would they have had guns? It just so happened that they had a taser, and that's what saved that little boy's life. And it was so deep. It was so deep. And then Empire did the best thing they could have done. That's where they ended it. They ended it right there. So, those two storylines gave us something. Gave us something we could feel. Alright, y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in them comments. Peace.